Azure App Services supports a mobile app service model, which provides access to data, authentication, and push notification services. And it's the server that decides which features it wants to use from the Azure App Services platform. Now, the mobile client utilizes standard web protocols to access and interact with the service. We cover the server side of this diagram in Azure 110, and this class is going to dive into the client side, how to consume the services exposed by Azure. Consuming data on your .NET or Xamarin application is pretty easy as the mobile app uses standard HTTP or HTTPS using REST to interact with clients. So as long as you know the endpoint location, you can interact with the service. So if you've taken the Xam 150 class, then you already know how to access and work with the service. So here you can see we're creating a new HTTP client, setting our accept type header, and issue a get against our Azure service endpoint. And it's going to return JSON data, which can then be passed by the .NET code. Now, there's actually two types of mobile services available from Azure. Now, the latest version of Azure Mobile Services is the mobile apps feature Azure App Service. And the older version, which is now deprecated and unsupported, is the mobile services API. Now, it's important to note that these two are not compatible with each other. So Azure uses a special header value passed from the client to determine the expectations and the version, and that's Zumo API version. And it can be either passed as a header value with each request or on the URL, like you can see here. And the value indicates the version of the client SDK being used. And Azure expects version 2.0.0, and all other values are going to return a 400 level bad request response. So this version check can be disabled on the server side through a web.config setting. So when dealing with the data, you'll find it's passed to and from the server in the standard JSON format. And the client can use any available parser or even just work with the strings directly. Here we're using the popular Newtonsoft json.net parser to take the return JSON string and turn it into a .NET object that we can use the C Sharp dynamic support to work with. Now, of course, if you know the shape of the data, then you can use the generic form of the deserialized method to return a known shape. While you can do all the parsing and connection using the standard networking classes, it turns out that Microsoft publishes a set of client SDKs to interact with mobile apps on the Azure App Services platform. So it does all the necessary work on your behalf to connect and communicate with the backend service. And on .NET and Xamarin, it utilizes HTTP client and JSON.NET, the very same mechanisms that we use. And there's SDKs for most platforms, including .NET, HTML, native iOS and Android. And of course, there's a Xamarin SDK, which is what we're going to be using today. Now, the SDK provides support to access all of the features of the mobile app service. Now, there's three steps we have to do to our application to add support for the Azure client SDK to our Xamarin app. So first, we'll need to add the client SDK assemblies, and these are shipped as NuGet packages. Next, we'll initialize the Azure SDK, and this has to be done in the platform-specific projects. And then finally, we'll configure and use a mobile service client object, which is an Azure SDK type to connect and talk to our Azure mobile service. So let's go through these steps in detail. .NET-based apps, which includes Xamarin, can use predefined classes to consume Azure services. So while you can add a binary to your app from a local DLL, the most common way to add support for an Azure service is through a NuGet package. And there's a ton of these packages online. Many are marked as deprecated as Azure has evolved really quickly. So you can use the feed shown in the browser to get a list of Azure SDK packages. And these libraries are provided by Microsoft and are all open source. And you can find them at github.com slash Azure. The primary package we want to add is the Microsoft Azure Mobile Client Package. And this is the core assembly that contains the required initialization and all of the support to interact with. And this will add a few other dependencies such as JSON.NET to your projects. And Azure Client SDK and dependencies are distributed across a variety of assemblies. So you should also make sure to update these dependencies just to ensure you're getting the latest distribution. And you'll also want to add this package to each of the platform-specific projects, iOS, Android, and Windows, as well as any other project that will be using the Azure types. Now, once you've added the package, we need to add a single line of code into our Android and iOS applications to initialize the framework. And this code has to be executed for each launch. And on Android, it's common to either place this in your onCreate override of the main activity for Xamarin Forms, 
or in an application override in a Xamarin Android application subclass. The key point here is that it gets executed just once, and it has to be executed before any other Azure code. On iOS, it's common to place this into your finished launching method in the app delegate. And this initialization is only required for Android and iOS apps. Windows apps don't actually require this code at all. And once we've added the NuGet packages and completed the platform specific requirements, we're ready to connect to the Azure service. And we can do this with a mobile service client object. And this is a built-in type in the Azure SDK. Now the constructor takes the Azure service endpoint, which is the URL from our app dashboard. And this object wraps a HTTP client object and provides the structure for the HTTP requests, which will be made to the service on our behalf. Most of the time, you should create this object when you're ready to use Azure features and then keep it for the life of your application. And it'll open and close network connections as needed.